A couple of videos ago I went for a ride up in the bush. And you might recall that I hit a couple of gutters reasonably hard and bottomed it. And uh, I realised later that my bash plate is just slightly bent on the bracket at the back here. So today's maintenance project is to take the bash plate off, take the bracket off and repair it. It's only bent very slightly, but the last time I took the bash plate off I realised that it was difficult to get back on because the, the bolt holes weren't lining up perfectly anymore. So, rather than just leave it and ignore it, it's time to do a bit of maintenance and do the job properly. After all, I am retired and therefore I've got nothing better to do. Anyway, here are the brackets that hold the bash plate on. There's one at the front and uh, it uses two existing holes in the frame. It's just uh, 5 mil mild steel, 25 mil wide, and it's bolted with two existing holes on the other side of the frame for the front part. It's pretty rigid. And at the back, same sort of deal. There's one hole there for the back bracket and round on the other side. Again there's an existing bracket uh, with two bolt holes in it that I've used to bolt the other side. And you can see that this bracket is just slightly bent. If I just hold the screwdriver up here you can see the little bent area there. So time to fix it. And as everyone knows a job will go a lot quicker if you put it everything in fast motion. Technology's a marvellous thing. So, in no time, the back bracket is extracted and I can see quite clearly now that it's bent just in that spot, just there. So, it's down to the shed and into the vise. And you can see here that uh, the mild steel bends relatively easily. So um, after I've got this nice and straight, I might just do something about that. But first, I'll do a bit of cleaning up just using a flap disc on the angle grinder. Clean all the old paint and rust off it so it's nice and shiny. Now I don't have a lot of scope for uh, making this bracket stronger but there is a little bit of scope so I've got a couple of bits of scrap steel that I'm cutting that I'm going to weld onto the bracket to reinforce it a bit. Look at all those pretty sparks. Back up into the garage and it's time for a test fit. I can't put a piece right across because of the exhaust but I'm going to put a piece on one side and then another piece on the other. It won't be perfect, but it, it will stiffen up that bracket a little bit. So now it's back to the shed to stick those pieces on. With those pieces welded on the edge, that should stiffen it up reasonably well. My amateur welding always looks better in fast motion. It almost looks like I know what I'm doing. But that's not a bad looking weld even if I do say so myself.
I love TIG welding. It's so clean and neat and precise. And for these sort of welds, there's no grinding required either. Okay, back up into the garage to give it a test fit to make sure everything is still hunky and dory. And yep, everything's good. So, it's back down to the shed again. And uh, I'll give the, the plate itself a bit of a clean up. And this needs a bit of a repair too. Um, <laughs> the last time uh, I fitted it, all I did was enlarge the hole to make things fit. Well, I'm going to fill that hole up and re-drill it. And also there's a little crack here that I'm going to weld up while I'm at it. By clamping a bit of steel on the back of the hole, I can weld up the hole of the hole without the aluminium uh, running out the other side and so when I turn it over it won't be that difficult to uh, just clean up the other side as well. So that side's filled up nicely I'll be able to grind that back and it'll look like $100. So time to turn it over. And it's mostly okay on the other side, but um, I'll just clean that right up so that when I grind it back, it'll be perfect again. I previously marked out where the center of the, the hole really should be, so I'm just scribing over the weld itself, ready for drilling. I haven't dressed the weld yet because I'd grind off the marks for the center hole. But the weld's smooth enough to be able to uh, put the center punch in and drill the hole, and then I'll clean it up. With that all done, I can now dress up the welds. Still just using a flap disc on the angle grinder for this. There we go, all nicely dressed. And I've reinforced it by welding on the inside as well. So, now it's over to the buffing wheel to give it a bit of a buff up, make it nice and shiny. I'm only going to bother buffing the sides. I'm not going to bother buffing the bottom of the bash plate, because unless I run over you, you're not going to be able to see it. Time for final fitting and I've bought some nice new stainless steel dome head 
Allen bolts. And it's about now that I realised that I didn't repaint that back bracket. What an idiot. It seems there's no job that I can do without making at least one mistake. But you'll be happy to know that I didn't go out and pull it all apart again and paint it. I just had a nice cup of tea and a lie down and the feeling passed. And the reason why this clip is silent is that Wendy's out the front mowing the lawn and making a huge racket. Well, here's the final product. A bash plate and brackets completely repaired, even if the back bracket isn't painted. Another maintenance job done. Very satisfying. But don't stop watching yet. Here's a little bonus. Also today, I had a real treat. I got to ride this 1975 Kawasaki Z900. This is owned by my best mate Norm and I'm very jealous. It rides beautifully. Disappointment usually accompanies riding a classic, but not the case with this. This was a beautiful ride. Powerful, easy to handle, steers well. So now I have to convince Norm that he needs to gift the bike to me. That'll be a good test of how good a mate he really is. <laughs>